Hello and welcome to lecture 4 in electrochemistry. Today we're going to look at building reaction series. Of course these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. Um, they uh, form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. Hopefully you're keeping track of your progress in mastering these concepts uh, to get yourself ready for both your unit test and the diploma. Your data booklet contains a table of relative strengths of oxidizers and reducers. It's called a standard reduction potential table. Uh, here's a small snippet from a similar page. Um, the way the page is organized, um, the oxidizing agents are listed on the left, and the strongest oxidizing agent is at the top. So on your table, the very strongest oxidizing agent listed is the fluorine gas. Um, the reducing agents are listed on the right, with the strongest reducing agent down at the bottom of the page. And I don't have the bottom of the page in this little snip. I, I think the alkaline metals and the alkaline earth metals are um, sort of congregate down there. They're very strong electron donors. Of course, the table is a measure of the potential energy of electrons that reside in various chemical systems. Uh, the units for that potential energy are electron volts. Um, uh, an electron is analogous to a ball rolling down a hill. The ball rolls down a hill spontaneously uh, to gain the lowest possible potential energy state available. Well, electrons sort of do the same thing. They flow spontaneously to a chemical system that might be available that provides the lowest possible potential energy state. The universe likes low potential energy systems. Um, in terms of the table then, electrons flow from uh, strong reducing agents to strong oxidizing agents and they do so spontaneously. Um, uh, they'll flow from the uh, bottom right of the page to the top left of the page. And in this snippet we'll see if we mixed uh, metallic mercury with uh, chlorine gas you would see a flow of electrons from the mercury to the chlorine gas like this. So the chlorine is oxidizing the mercury. It's converting it into mercury ions by stripping electrons off of it. And uh, similarly, the chlorine gas, which is the strongest oxidizing agent in the system, is being converted into chloride ions. So just to uh, hit that on the head, the chlorine gas is the strongest oxidizing agent in the system, and it will strip electrons from the mercury atoms. The mercury atoms are the strongest reducing agent in the system, and they will donate electrons to the chlorine gas. In the end, we'll be left with a solution of both mercury ions and chloride ions. Um, we can examine a series of reactions and determine the relative strength of oxidizing agents and reducing agents in that series based upon the reactivity of each species involved in that series. So here's an example where we're given a, a series of experimental results. We, we're mixing oxidizers, we're mixing reducers, and some are reacting uh, positively and some aren't reacting at all. And it's our job to take this uh, sort of series of experimental results and build a table of relative strengths of oxidizers and reducers, much like the table in your data booklet. So um, let's take a look at, and this is just the same table on the, as on the last page, except um, it's up at the top of the page. Here we have a, a positive result, meaning a reaction takes place spontaneously between the silver ion and the copper atom. That means that silver ion is oxidizing that copper atom, turning it into copper too. So in a competition for the electrons, the silver ion wins. It's a stronger oxidizer than copper too. And likewise, the silver ion is oxidizing the zinc. We have a positive result there. And it's oxidizing the magnesium. So the silver ion of the metals is the strongest oxidizing agent. We'll, we'll talk about the presence of hydrogen, pure acid, in a minute. So in terms of our table uh, dealing with the metals first, silver is the strongest oxidizing agent present uh, as an ion. And then if we move forward, if we look at the copper 2 ion, well it's oxidizing zinc and it's oxidizing mercury. So in terms of the metals, that copper 2 ion is the second strongest oxidizer present in the system. And then finally, as between the zinc ion and the magnesium ion, the zinc ion oxidizes metallic magnesium. Magnesium ion fails to oxidize zinc. So zinc is the third strongest, the zinc ion is the third strongest of the metallic oxidizers in the system. 
And then finally the hydrogen. We see that the hydrogen ion fails to oxidize copper atoms, fails to oxidize silver atoms, but will oxidize zinc and will oxidize magnesium. It'll, it'll corrode those. So you couldn't carry a, a strong acid around in a zinc container or a magnesium container. Copper would be safe, it wouldn't corrode. Silver would be safe, it wouldn't corrode, although the silver would be expensive. So in terms of the strengths of relative strengths of oxidizers, the silver ion strips electrons off of each of the other metals, making it the strongest oxidizing agent. The copper ion strips electrons off both the zinc and the magnesium, so it's number two. And the zinc oxidizes the magnesium, making the zinc uh, uh, the, the third strongest metallic oxidizer, and the magnesium is the weakest uh, uh, metallic oxidizer in the system. The hydrogen ions oxidize both the zinc and the magnesium, but not the copper or the silver. So uh, the silver ions will be the third strongest oxidizer present. So we draw our activity series in the same manner as the data booklet. And if you look at your data booklet, the entire table is set up as a series of reduction half reactions. And that's what we'll do. We'll put our strongest oxidizing agent at the top left, uh, which is that silver ion we talked about. And if you remember, the second strongest oxidizer was the copper 2 ion. And you'll see that we're drawing these in the same manner as we, they were drawn in the table as reduction half reactions. The third strongest oxidizer was the acidic solution, the protons. It, it failed to oxidize either silver or copper, but it successfully oxidized both the zinc and the magnesium. And that magnesium atom then is the strongest reducing agent in the system, an alkaline earth metal. So this is the type of analysis um, you call them on to do when you when they present you with these sorts of questions. And there it is. The silver ion is the strongest oxidizing agent, while the magnesium atom is the strongest reducing agent. So here's another question where we're asked to build a table. And let's see what we have. So we have... Uh, C, uh, strontium, excuse me, I think it's strontium, um, reacting with the cesium-3 ion. And in the end of the day, the cesium-3 ion strips electrons off the strontium. So in a competition for electrons, cesium-3 is a stronger oxidizer than the strontium-2 ion. We'll have to remember that. In this next example, we have metallic nickel reacting with the cesium-3 ion, and there's no reaction. What that means is um, the nickel ion whether it be, I think it's a nickel-2 ion, is a stronger oxidizer than the cesium-3 ion. So um, when we build our table, we'll have to rank nickel above cesium, which we're already ranking above strontium in terms of strength of oxidations. And then we do have a reaction between um, acid, protons in solution, and the nickel uh, atom. The, the hydrogen is oxidizing the nickel, so hydrogen so far is at the top of our list. This hydrogen ion appears to be the strongest oxidizing agent present. Although finally we see that when we mix platinum with a strong acid, with, with protons, there's no reaction. That means the platinum ion, in whatever charge it, it forms, is the strongest oxidizing agent. In a competition for electrons, platinum will not lose electrons to a strong acid. And here are those results again. The cesium strips electrons off the strontium, making cesium-3 stronger than strontium-2. So there's cesium and there's strontium. And again, we're writing these as reduction half reactions, making the cesium-3 ion the strongest oxidizing agent and the stront strontium atom the strongest reducing agents. The second reaction in the series tells us that cesium-3 cannot oxidize atomic nickel. So the nickel ion is therefore a stronger oxidizing agent than the cesium ion. So we now add nickel to our table. And the nickel ion uh, will not lose electrons to cesium, so it's a stronger oxidizer. Um, the nickel atom will be oxidized by the hydrogen ion, however, making the hydrogen ion a stronger oxidizing agent than the nickel ion. So now we rebuild our table with the hydrogen ion at the top of the list of strong oxidizers. And then finally, to complete our table, we've got um, platinum and hydrogen resulting in no reaction. So the platinum ion becomes the strongest oxidizing agent in the system. Oh, and it's in fact platinum-4. And then we build the balance of our table beneath platinum to complete the reactivity series. 
Um, these questions can be complex. Sometimes these tables are pretty elaborate, but with sufficient practice, you, it, conceptually it, it sits quite ni nicely in what we've seen already. Um, I hope you found that uh, helpful. Uh, I'd refer you to any homework your teacher assigns you. And when you come back, um, I think our next lecture relates to, um, I think it's uh, electrochemical cells, if I remember correctly. And we'll see you again.